Dear Professor Barodi, Professor Bogardi, uh, Mr. Joe Akoma, Professor Johan Rockström, Professor Varsmati, and uh, dear Claudia Paul Wostel, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, I'd like to welcome you here in Bonn to the Water in Anthropocene's conference. The conference is organized by the Global Water System Project, which my ministry has funded for nearly one decade now. During this time, the International Project Office in Bonn has coordinated a broad research agenda. The main topic was the complex global water system and the interaction with natural and anthropogenic influences. During the next four days, we will hear about the results and the insights of this tremendous effort. We will discuss the global dimension of water system changes. The conference will provide a platform to build links between science, policy, and practice in the area of water resources management. And I do hope we can identify ways how research can help to solve the global water problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, I found the button. I'm sure all of you are quite familiar with the topic, water topic. Anyhow, I would like to uh, like us to recall some facts. Some of these facts were addressed in this video clip, but I don't want to, to repeat it. Water is the most important resource for human beings. Without water, no life. Water cannot be replaced by anything else. The availability of water is limited and demand is continuously increasing. Also, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, but not only, but not even 1% of the water resources is ground and surface water and can be used by humans and ecosystems. Since 1950, the world water consumption has approximately tripled and it will be the same till 2050. So it is essential to ensure the sustainable handling and protection of water resources. My ministry is working to achieve this goal through several research priorities. I will introduce some of them later in my presentation. The elements of global change like widespread land use changes and pollution as well as population growth urbanization and climate change increase the pressure on quality and quantity of global water resources. Large parts of the world are already experiencing significant water shortage of or stress and the situation is likely to worsen. As global population, economies and consumption rates continue to grow. However, the problems are also caused by poor water management which affects a large number of people and many ecosystems worldwide. Sustainable water management will require government en engagement and, this is very relevant, commitment, as well as stakeholder participation uh, at all levels. Scientists are able to provide the knowledge, to provide information and technical solutions that are needed to solve the water problem. In addition, Governments must lead the way, setting framework conditions for improved water management. Stakeholders from society, business, and in particular from the regional level, have to be involved from the very beginning. The transdisciplinary aspect within the research project is therefore from utmost importance for the successful transfer of the knowledge and results. Okay, okay. Okay, now we are coming to the international developments. Water problems became a global issue for policy and science during the last decade of the 20th century. The water problem is therefore a priority on the political and the research agenda worldwide. At the Earth Summit in Rio in 1992, the growing scarcity of water has put on the international political agenda. 
Several conventions, like, for example, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, resulted out of it. The Millennium Development Goals, adopted in the year 2000, targeted at halving the percentage of people without access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation by 2015. Given the magnitude of the task, the United Nations General Assembly finally procla proclaimed the period 2002 to 2015 International Decade for Action Water for Life. To tackle the challenges, of global change, including a sustainable water management, we need to elaborate political concepts and guidelines based and supported by research. Embedded in and based on international commitment, the scientific community and the funding agencies are also responding to these challenges. The political basis to contribute to these challenges is our framework program, Research for Sustainable Development, called FONA, and the federal government's strategy for the interna internationalization of science and research. The FONA program, which uh, we launched in 2010, offers an integrated system-orientated approach that develops innovative concepts and solutions in the five fields of action you can see on the slide. The two highlighted fields, sustainable management and resources, and global responsibility and international networking, are the scope of our activities in international water-related research. With our funding priorities, we additionally contribute to the strategy of the internationalization of science and research, especially to address global challenges and the acceptance of international responsibilities. On the following slides, I will show you some examples for funding activities of BMBF, which have been launched to tackle the global water problems. Okay. Global change will influence the current and future living conditions of people significantly. Therefore, there is an urgent and increasing demand for research to provide answers and decision support in this context. Due to this, BMBF launched the program Global Change and the Hydrological Cycle called GLOVA in the year 2000. GLOVA's aim is to develop simulation tools which help to realize a sustainable water management under global change conditions. In direct uh, cooperation with the local and regional stakeholders and decision makers, significantly sound strategies are being developed to secure water regarding availability, quality, and allocation. Global takes uh, into account global environmental changes and socio-economic framework conditions. As you can see on the map, we did not only stay in Germany with our research activities, but went to countries several affected by climate change as well as, as well. Global, global consists of five interdisciplinary and integrative cluster projects. It's the Glover Impetus Project in Africa, with partners in Benin, Morocco, and Glover Volta in Ghana and Burkina Faso. In Germany, we had Glover Danube and Glover Elbe, and in the Middle East, we had the Glover Jordan River Basin Project. Each project was coordinated by a, re a German research institution. The funding started in 2000, with a duration of, uh, of up to 11 years, divided in three main phases. The German project Danube and Elbe and the African project Impetus and Walter ended in 2000. Glover Jordan River ended in December 2011. However, the African project was some, uh, supplemented with follow-up initiatives in order to strengthen the local research capacities and to optimize the implementation 
of the tools and results in the region. And the interesting thing is that, for example, Vascal and Zascal's regional science service centers are products of this global development because we said it's good to have projects, but it's better to have a sustainable infrastructure in, in these countries. And we are lucky to have really reliable partner in Western South Africa. And next week, Mrs. Bauer and me, we will be in Abidjan uh, to bring the things forward. And we, uh, we are very sure that we will have these institutions in the Western and the Southern parts of Africa in, in the next month, that they can start their work as a research institution in the region in order to, to provide decision makers from business and politics uh, in, in the, in the uh, states uh, concerning land use and sustainable land use and global change. This is really a very good uh, result uh, and, and a long, longer lasting result of Glover. The overall budget of Glover spent by BMBF was approximately 75 million euro. Decision support tools were developed and tested in close cooperation with the local and regional stakeholders. The project results and management uh, options have contributed to diverse adaptation measures and the various river basins. Okay. Why Glover concentrated on the regional and river basin level? BMBF supported, in addition, a project with a focus on the global level. The Global Water System Project was established between 2002 and 2004 as a joint project of the four global environmental change programs, Diversitas, IGGBP, IHDP, and WCRP. Since 2003, BMBF supported the International Project Office of the Global Water System Project with a budget of more than 3 million euro. The overarching question of GWSP is how humans are changing the global water cycle, the associated biogeochemical cycles and the biological components of the global water system and what are the social feedbacks arising, arising from these changes. The research carried out over the past decades resulted in several pro products as, for example, the Digital Water Atlas or the Great Reservoirs and Dams Database. Furthermore, GWSP has published several important scientific and policy publications and last but not least organized this conference. Thank you very much for this engagement. And I think this office is doing a really very good job. Uh, th since this time, and thank you very much uh, for Mr. Uh, Professor Bogardi and Baduri for doing this job in a very excellent way. We are happy to have them on board. In the efforts to achieve the Millennium Development Goals, BIC's expectations were connected with integrated water resources management called IWRM a concept that was already uh, established at an international level in 1992 in the Dublin Principles and the Agenda 21. In IWRM, water is not regarded as an isolated matter, but in its inter interdependencies with other resources. The different uses and the ecological function of water are taken into account. In order to develop successful implementation strategies, all public and private stakeholders need to actively participate in the planning and the decision-making processes. The concept of WRM, uh, WRM, IRM, pursues a transdisciplinary and transsectoral approach. This implies that knowledge from various disciplines of natural science, engineering, and social science has to be integrated all, and that all necessary stakeholders that take part in the project from the very beginning till the end. BMBF has seen the chances of IWRM for a sustainable management of water resources in time. In 2006, we started the funding activity Integrated Water Resources Management in our FONA program. 
In selected model regions in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, the approach of IWRM is being established. All relevant actors are considered and involved. By the early involvement of business and industry, industry partners, it is intended to accelerate the implementation of technical solutions. A further goal of the funding activity is to enable people to implement IWRM concepts themselves. This is realized by appropriate educational, vocational, and training measures, the so-called capacity development. Through the development of integrated planning instruments, the adaptation of water technologies to regional conditions, and comprehensive capacity development, BMBF, BMBF wants to contribute to the Millennium Development Goals. Within the funding activity, BMBF funds 19 joint research projects with 112 partners and three accompanying projects with approximately 120 million euro. A glance at this map shows the regions where the project of IWRM funding activities are located, and it's really a global, a worldwide project. Collaborative research projects are carried out, for example, in China, Mongolia, Ukraine, Iran, Israel, Jordan, Namibia, South Africa, Brazil, and Oman. And I think it is and it was a really successful uh, funding measure and program. What are the lessons learned from IWRM? Please let me share some preliminary conclusions from our funding activities in the area of integrated water resources management. In spite of all the difficulties from the complex tasks, IWM, IWRM can be regarded as a success story. The IWRM process only makes sense when it can be implemented as a set of concrete, concrete measures which must be tailored to the specific regional framework conditions. Successful context, concepts has to be transsectoral. They have to be integrated, in, they have to integrate other areas like agriculture, industry, energy and services. This is the only way to really accomplish a sustainable management of water resources. The continuous further development of an integrated water resources management will require an even more intensive cooperation with the partner countries. We made this experience as well in, in the Mekong Delta. There are six countries which have to speak together because you have to have a common approach. Otherwise, it will cause a lot of big problems. This refers to all relevant stakeholders based here, based there. A sustainable implementation of IWM concept can only be achieved when the on-site maintenance and further operation of adapted technologies are ensured. We are able to produce a lot of sophisticated technologies, but to make it sustainable, you need the maintenance and you need operation. And you have to be able to have the, to have the money for it. The consideration of economic aspect, therefore, is fundamental for the implementation of an IWR, IWRM concept. An economic aspect means more than just running up the expected costs of investment. The operational and management costs, as well as the cost of rate financing, must be taken into account. Financing concepts customized to the specific regional conditions have to be developed. For long-term establishments of the solutions, concepts and strategies developed within the project, a systematic capacity development approach plays a key role. I only want to say two words to our engagement on the European level. We are part of the joint programming initiative Water Challenges for a Changing World. This joint programming initiative has the approach to coordinate a little bit more the research activities in the field of water on the European level and to come up in the next years with the so-called strategic research agenda where every part, member states and science and industry will, will play their role. 
And the European Innovation Partnership on Water is innovation driven. This is the attempt on the European level to support European industry to pick up faster innovation in the water sector and to be more competitive in a worldwide scale. On Friday, I will be in, in Brussels representing the uh, German Ministry of Education and Research uh, in order to, to speak about the, the next activities uh, in the European Innovation Partnership uh, on water sector. Let me say a little bit about our national funding activities. Ladies and gentlemen, let me close my presentation with an insight into our most recent funding activities in the field of sustainable water management. Our new funding activity, Sustainable Water Management, called NAVAM, is based on the line of action, sustainable management and resources in our framework program, FONA. With NAVAM, we promote the development of innovative technologies, procedures, and system solutions for a sustainable management of the resource water. The indicative budget until 2000 amounts to approximately 200 million euro. The funding activity is divided in five thematic areas, water and health, water in urban areas, water and energy, water and food, water and environment. The water and energy topic is really an interesting because uh, in uh, German sanitation uh, facility, in the future it will be possible that they will produce more energy than they need for, for the sanitation work uh, in their facilities. It's really an exciting, very exciting development because currently uh, a town has to spend 20% of the, his energy for sanitation purposes. And this is a little re a revolution provided and, and uh, driven by technologies and to bring the right partners together. The research questions are specified and published in individual calls of these five priorities. Our overall goal is to develop innovative technologies and management concepts, to adapt them to changing framework conditions and to disseminate them internationally. This has to be done in an interdisciplinary way and in cooperation with industry, ministries and as well as planners and decision makers uh, at the regional level. Therefore, the situation is very similar to the international situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I could give you an insight into how we try to tackle the water challenge from the science policy perspective. And I can promise you that we will not stop here. The conference provides a good platform to discuss further developments with leading experts from all over the world at, I think, the right time. In this sense, I wish you fruitful discussions and much success for the coming days. Thank you for your attention.